COVID-19 outbreak. Yeah, well, Lily, thanks for having me. When you look at Q1 GDP, I would say 100% plus came from COVID. Uh, if you look at that GDP report, you saw a 21% jump in residential fixed investment. That doesn't happen overnight. That was the momentum going into first quarter. We had full employment. We had the best economy that we've had in our history prior to COVID-19. So just as quickly as we dropped from COVID-19 like a natural disaster, we're going to rebound that much quicker towards the back half of the year for sure. Well, it is now widely expected that Q2 might be even worse, and uh, we are looking at a rebound towards Q4. What is your estimate on that? Yeah, so the Congressional Budget Office slowly estimates that for the year, GDP is going to be down around negative uh, 5.6%. So if we just do round numbers on a $20 trillion economy, let's assume a, an economic contraction of $1.2 trillion. The government and Federal Reserve have now authorized close to $9 trillion to fend this off in the form of uh, a direct stimulus and aid, $2.8 trillion. The lending facility between the Fed and the, and the Treasury of $4 trillion. And the Federal Reserve has done over $2 trillion of asset purchases. Plus, in the works, we may have a, an infrastructure uh, a deal coming towards the end, which could be you know, close to a trillion dollars. So when all is said and done, as much as this has been a tragedy, I think what people are underestimating, when you have $9 trillion of aid and liquidity chasing a $1.2 trillion shortfall and contraction, once people get back to work and demand comes back into the economy like you're seeing in China, I think we could wind up at growth levels in the first half of next year that would never happen in the absence of all this stimulus. So it may surprise people to the upside once we get through this valley here in Q2 and Q3. Yeah,